So are AI stocks the next big thing? Is this the next big wave to find financial freedom? Um, I will get into that and a couple of other asset classes and why I feel the way I do about them. So yes, it's obvious that AI is the next big thing, but that doesn't mean that the stocks are going to be great. So I've seen some people out there kind of promoting make all your money on AI stocks, blah, 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 that you've missed crypto. Well, first of all, you have not missed crypto. Crypto has barely even started. It's barely even getting warmed up. So we're going to see gains like people made between 2019 and 2021 or 20, you know, 18 to 2021. We'll see those kinds of gains again. So that will massively outperform a lot of stock type of things. So we did see new all time highs on the stock market and the Dow Jones, which I predicted. And this is something called a melt up. However, those gains were mainly from the Magnificent Seven. So it's like seven companies are doing great and sucking all the value out of all the other stocks. So there's a lot of stocks that have completely tanked, especially banking stocks and things like this. So my take on this, and it's the same reason, is that I don't use, I don't play the stock market because the stock market is going to have a massive, massive, massive crash. There's also reports now that certain areas of housing are starting to come down and people are calling for 30, 40% corrections. And that's an extreme understatement, underestimation on where housing is going to come down to. So the crash that is coming will be so devastating that it will absolutely wreck people. And so few people are going to be prepared for it. So few people understand it in the right way. So um, not making any financial recommendations here. I'm just giving you my take on it, my psychic take on it and what I would do, right? What I am doing. So first of all, I don't have anything in the stock market. I do not think the stock market is safe. I know this, the rug is going to get ripped out from under the stock market, right? Most of the analysts are sort of like, oh, well, here we are. Now we're in this up, up, up mode. So we're just going to keep going up, up, up all year. So they sort of just expect us to keep going up or they have forecasts over the next couple of years. These are going to be exceedingly wrong because we're going to have such spectacular rise and crash movements in every asset class this year that these guys are going to get it all wrong. And that is why I would not buy any kind of AI stock because getting in and out at the right time is going to be exceedingly difficult. And it's not likely that, in fact, I don't see these stocks moving up the way that you would be hoping for them to before the crash happens, right? So, and we're going to have more than one crash. It's not like just one. It's going to be pretty insane. You're going to see the stock market looking like cryptocurrency charts. So people are going to be freaking out. So no, I would not be getting any kind of AI stocks. It's the same reason I won't buy mining stocks on precious metals. As much as I love precious metals and want to have them and own them, I do not want to buy into mining companies. And I absolutely am behind the miners. You know, I, I believe in them. I think that they're doing an amazing job. They've had a really rough go of it. There's been a lot of regulation and stopping of people from being able to do what they need to do, especially in like Mexico, the mines are being shut down. And Mexico, of course, has more silver than I think any other country on the planet Earth. So there might be someone else who's close, but Mexico is very silver rich. So I do like the companies. I do like the mining companies in the sense that I believe in them and that they will be able to pull through and they're going to be you know, successful long term, but I don't believe in mining stocks because of the insane crashes that are coming to the stock market. So this is why I personally, this is no financial advice at all. I just tell people I don't make decisions, right? I provide information, not decision making, but I have very specific, specific um, forecasts around gold and silver, around Bitcoin and I have a whole lot of cryptocurrencies that I think are going to be great and they are going to go up, right? They're not going to get stuck the way that like Fangs has drawn all the value out of all the rest of the stock market. So the stock market has gone up, but only because of those magnificent seven companies, which is like Facebook, Apple, uh, anyway, you know, you get it, Google, whatever. So 
those guys, yeah, sure, you could have them in your portfolio if you want, but they're still going to have massive volatility even in those companies. So this is why I don't think AI is the place to invest. I'm not investing my money there, right? I do think AI is going to do things. Um, it's going to be doing lots and lots of crazy things all the time. It's going to be, you know, updating us and having more capabilities by the week coming up here. We'll start to get weekly updates. And when we get to that point where we're having weekly updates, you better absolutely hang on to your shorts because it's going to get pretty wild very very fast much faster than people are prepared for because it's going to be in the midst of all of these things that are there's a lot of carnage there's gonna be a lot of carnage when by the time ai is updating that quickly it's probably going to be mm, somewhere around summer fall where um, ai is updating that rapidly which means that it's coming up with new iterations of itself and the People who think they're in control are not. And that's pretty much where we're going to get to like daily updates. It's updating itself. It's it's going to be pretty uh, wild. We're headed for a really wild ride. AI is not something that we should have approved in the way that it is operating right now. So I watched a pretty fascinating video the other day. It was a science video and the woman who did it was actually quite funny, I thought. So, and I'll link it in the comments below at the top comment for you guys, if you want to go watch it. But she was saying that they had been doing these think tank experiments on where what they expected AI to do. And the thought experiments that they did were kind of interesting. Um, I don't think they got it quite right, but I do think that they were interesting in the sense of how they went about the thought experiments and sort of what some of the conclusions were that they came to. But what was most interesting to me was that she referenced uh, the Philip K. Dick novel, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? which was later made into a movie called Blade Runner, which to me, in my opinion, my humble opinion, is the best movie ever made because, and I've always thought this, uh, because it is absolutely forecasting the future because, you know, it's a movie about replicants and you can't tell what's real and what's not. And the point she made about that movie was that in the movie, the characters themselves are constantly questioning is this real? Are we in reality? Who's real? What? Who's not real? You know, what kind of future do I have with this woman that I am running off with at the end is the question Harrison Ford asks himself. So, oops, I hope I didn't spoil it for anybody, but there's a lot of existential questioning going on. The reason to me that it is such a great movie is because it is, and by the way, I hated the second one. I thought it was awful. It was just violence for its own sake. It was brutal. But the first one is so good because it is a metaphor for humanity and hum human relationships and the people in humanity who aren't real humans. There's a certain segment of humanity who are, you know, they're the what is called the dark triad in psychology, the sociopaths, the psychopaths, and the narcissists. These are people with no empathy. So if we look at the replicants as being metaphors for narcissism. And so we humans, good people, decent people who have feelings are out there dealing and navigating with the world around us. Harrison Ford character's job is to track down these deviant re replicants who have no feelings and to destroy them, right? So the reason this movie is so great is because it really shows on the existential sort of soul level what this battle is. This is a battle between good and evil and how this dark triad personality types of people who are abusive, care not about other people, use people, get what they want, take what they want. And it's told in a brilliant way. It's a fantastic movie. You know, I really enjoyed just the look of it and the way it was made. But the upshot of it is figuring out who's real and what's real and how you can't do that. And AI is bringing that to your world. Stay tuned. It's coming. We're already in a time in this world where it's very difficult. We've seen evidence and proof that there are deep fakes, right? There's, there's videos of Joe Biden saying things he never said, Donald Trump saying things he never said, 
AI can do this. I was playing with some of the uh, software to do some of these videos and the software won't let you do almost anything. It kind of tells you, oh, you violated our policies. You violated our terms. It's very editing of us if we're trying to use it. But the results were very interesting. I'll put a couple up here of things that images that I generated, one of which was extremely disturbing because you know that even though AI will not let you, this filter, this system I'm trying to use won't let me make certain images. For example, I was trying to get uh, an alien lying on an autopsy table and it would not give me a green alien lying on its back. It just wouldn't do it. It said it was violating the terms. So I tried to put it on a bed. If I tried to put it on a couch, I'll show you. These images are ridiculous because AI right now doesn't even like know how many arms a person's supposed to have, right? It can't figure that out, but that's not far away. So the thing is that it, even though you can't use it for all these things, there is behind that filter, the whole database of everything. AI has all of these really horrible images, right? So there's some images that I created that look like just like, what is this? This is just super weird. I, I like can't even make sense of what that is. It's basically what AI does is it goes and wraps some image it already has. So if you're like, want to do a cowboy, but instead you want to make it you know, yellow cowboy on Mars, you can, it will wrap, you know, with scales or whatever, it will wrap the image of cowboys on horses with this sort of scaly reptilian idea and put it on, on what it imagines Mars will look like. So, or it just takes the earth and then wraps it in the idea of a red barren landscape. So it's taking from this giant repository of images it has and you know there are people who have access to all kinds of very creepy every porn every deviant thing that's ever been done is in there right that's ever anybody any creepazoid has ever filmed it's in there and ai will take that and wrap it with something so i'm just saying that image i just pointed at i just put up What's it wrapping? You know, it just looks really bizarre, whatever is being wrapped with this sort of green alien idea. It's very not right. So it has all those images. And there is, in fact, a movement. It's devoted to stopping deep fakes because essentially they can do anything with anybody's image with just a few seconds and they can put you in whatever scene, scenario they want to. It's insanely illegal. And that's what's going on. So this is what's really happening with AI. So you need to understand that there is that whole, and of course, AI has no moral structure of its own at this point in time, right? So we're going to have different AIs evolve and they will have different moral outlooks. If you want to look at it like that, they're not all going to see things the same way. They will each have sort of a different perspective on things, kind of like people do. So that's something to be aware of with AI because they've had this technology for much longer than they have been telling us, right? They've been using it for a very long time. Now it's being rolled out to us now that they figured out how to filter it and control it and make it work in a way that they want for to manipulate us. And so this is what AI can do. It can, you know, th there's, they could take, you know, Tucker Carlson and give him his job back and never have him enter the studio again. Just have him do every news story they want um, at Fox News without him, right? They could, they're not going to because it would be obvious, but they can do that. That's the kind of thing that is currently available, but we're not told about it, right? So the AI is going to make it so that we don't know what the heck is going on. We're going to be like trying to sort it out. No humans are going to be able to figure out what we're looking at, what we're dealing with. It's all going to be a big mystery. What's true? What's not? So this is going to be a very weird time because of that. It's like trying to walk through the swamp filled with fog to get to the other side and figure out what's going on. What are we dealing with here? That's what it's going to feel like until we get through this new next stage of crazy AI stuff. And of course, the other thing I'd like to point out is that Pluto in Aquarius is bringing all of this AI to the real world. And then Uranus, which rules Aquarius in Taurus, is actually bringing it to the physical world, right? Those robot dogs and things like this into the real world. So this is something that we need to, like I said, be paying attention to and be aware of. We have to make some de decisions for ourselves how we do and don't want to participate with this stuff because 
it's coming, like it or not. So time to get prepared. And of course, it could be extinction level. It absolutely could take us there. There is help and protection from the higher beings. They're protecting us. And I will repeat a prediction I've had since 2019. I was saying this stuff about how they're, we're going to come down to sort of a final battle here. And I see the ultimate sort of deciding battle happening in space stations off the earth up in space whatever that is inside space stations there's going to be some help from some you know et higher vibrational entities who are going to keep sort of like the big control grid skynet from being established over humanity now so they, they were headed for some really weird stuff and some very weird times here also, another prediction I've had for quite a long time is that there will be a piece of one of these um, space stations that will crash down to the Earth. So we're going to see it. People are going to be like, whoa, hey, wow, okay, they've been up there doing stuff. How long they've had to have been there for quite a long time because they built these things. People have been up there working. This is what's actually going on behind the scenes. It's big secrets, right, that are going to be starting to be revealed. This is one that I predicted in 2019, but it's worth it to say it again because we're headed towards it now. So if we want to be prepared, we want to keep our wits about us during this time. It's really important for us to go out and be part of nature, be connected to nature, be in our human lives, because that's how we get recharged and how we get our energy centers, you know, fueled up and connected to the higher forces. So that is my take. Of course, there's always a lot more specific information in my members area. So make sure you go check that out if you're interested and see what you think about what I offer there. I offer a lot of very detailed information, like I said, about Bitcoin and crypto. I do not think that it's a good idea to, I personally am not putting any money into the stock market, even though, yes, it made new all-time highs, but Bitcoin has certainly outperformed it, right? And we still have an alt season coming, which hasn't really even scratched the surface. So that's my take on the AI stuff. It's pretty fascinating and creepy. So let me know what you think. Have you played around with those AI image making softwares? What do you think uh, about what they do? You know, I'm throwing a few up here, but it's kind of weird, but it's also like tempting, right? The idea that I, the temptation to use it is strong because it can help your workflow and it can, you know, make things better and faster. So that's it. That's what I've got for you. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.